Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe. Let's talk about Raw. This show. Uh, this opening segment was CM Punk and Seth Rollins. Like, I don't know, man. That look, that I would. Is tell CM you this. Punk a baby face or a heel? What? <laughs> he's, like, he's CM Punk. He is just his character. He, you know what? I, let me tell you something. Is such he, an absolute jerk. He apologizes like you do. No, I apologize significantly more sincerely than CM Punk. CM Punk had the most horrific apology I've ever heard. To the point where in the middle of it, I actually think he might have lost his train of thought because he just paused for a the second. The bile built up too much in his mouth. <laughs> he was in the middle of, of what he said was an apology, and then he just stopped. And he stood there. And <laughs> Seth goes, are you going to apologize or what? And then all of a sudden, CM Punk just goes, I'm trying to apologize, okay? And some fan started laughing. Like, you could hear this fan. They just started howling because it was the most horrible, <coughs> horrible apology I've ever heard in my life. Are you kidding me? For some people, that's a shoot. There are some people, not saying you, Brian Alvarez, but there are some people where for them trying to choke out a, I'm sorry I screwed up and or you're right, very difficult for them to do. So I thought it played into who CM Punk is perfectly. So his apology was <laughs> for screwing Seth at ever getting a title shot against Damian Priest. So first Seth goes, you know, actions have consequences, you say, but that applies to everyone except you. Couldn't figure out why you did the thing I told you not to do, which is get in my business. And Punk said, I was handling my own business. And Seth says, what? Like, you weren't even in the match? Like, it was my match for the world title, how is this your business? And Punk says, well, maybe you being a husband and father, you'll understand. And now Seth's getting mad. He's talking about the family. And Punk says, there's a guy running around with a bracelet with my wife and my dog's name on it. <laughs> I got to be honest. Okay, he very quickly jumped in, as you're going to get to. But when he hit that, it's like... I got. I'd be. I, I laughed. I'm, I'm sorry. He even said, "It's probably fifty cents." Fifteen. Fifteen cents. But it's the principle of it. The uh, principle of it. I'm coming out. It's personal. I'm handling my business. If I screwed things up for you, he says, "If you can't be world champion or whatever your little pipe dream is, this is part of his apology. If you can't be world champion or whatever your little pipe dream is." Then he loses train of thought. Then he screams, I'm trying to apologize here. And finally he says, I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't mean to screw anything up for you. I'm snow blind with rage right now. But because it's you, I can't be that sorry. <laughs> so anyway. Hey, look, no Seth, you're in here. What I'm bearing is that Seth had the best promo of the last several years. It was, yes, it was damn good for him. This was Fantastic. Seth. He was incredible in this segment here. And to the point where, you know, this thing started with CM Punk saying, you know, I, I allowed you to be disrespectful to me once. Don't do it again. And Seth just freaking buries this guy six feet under. Punk doesn't do a thing. Seth gets the last word and leaves. And then... Later, Punk gets chastised by uh, Adam Pierce and told, dude, if you show up next week when I'm talking to uh, Drew McIntyre, there ain't going to be no Drew McIntyre match. You will not be getting a title shot. Your dreams are over. Stay home. And Punk just said, well, I guess I'll stay home. <laughs> he had a bad night, the CM Punk, this character. But you know what? The character needed that. He is constantly, yes, he got bloody beaten up by Drew McIntyre, but he is constantly doing things to, to rankle almost to the point of being psychotic about it. I mean, that's his business is about now screwing over Drew McIntyre at every turn. So he needs to have some sort of angst and, you know, things going against him at least a little bit. And Seth delivered on the promo. He responded to it perfectly. But, you know, it was about time for something like that to happen. All righty. Then we... Uh... 
So I move past this here. And then Adam Pierce meets with Dom, who doesn't want a team with Liv. And uh, Adam Pierce says, too bad, it's official. It's signed. I was like, who signed for Dom? He didn't want the match. That doesn't make any sense. But he was stuck. Jey Uso, Chad Gable uh, ended with the lights going out. Chad's freaked out, gets speared and pinned. Jay runs for his life, top babyface Jey Uso. And then uh, Nikki Cross shows up with a package for Pat McAfee. Chad Gable's backing up the aisle. Some fan screams, Gable behind you! And he goes, ah! <laughs> Falls down. That was the best. That was the best. Because he reacted to the crowd. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. Because he's a great worker. Mm. Seamus promo backstage. He's talking about who did, uh, 15 by the way, years. Who did Seamus run away from? Remember that when he's like, Cena! And he was the king of the ring, and then they buried him 10 feet underground for running away, even though they scripted it that way? I remember. Yeah. So uh, Seamus is backstage talking about 15 years. Bronson shows up. Seamus wants a match. Bronson says, I got to beat your uh, your mate, Pete Dunn, first. He left. So Bronson Reed beat Pete Dunn. Goes to kill him again afterwards. Seamus runs down to make the save. But Pete does not want to celebrate with Seamus. He's still bitter about the breakup of the Brawling Brutes. So now that I know what I know, I mean, maybe they're going to put Pete and Seamus together until Tyler Bate comes back because he's probably, you know, 2025 before he's back would be my guess. Oh, man. You know what they could do, too, even though I don't think they will, but it, it would be nice. With Ilya Dragunov and Sami Zayn and Braun Breaker constantly at each other, can you imagine throwing Pete Dunne into that mix? Yeah. Be good. They did a segment where Seth and Priest meet, and they talk about how they both kept their word on Saturday about nobody interfering and such, except the people that interfered. And Priest says, this gentleman's agreement, I still have a lot to prove. Let's just throw it out the window. After I beat Gunther, anytime, any place, I'll defend this title against you. I was like, wow. Wow. Lasted a whole day, that stip. Now, granted, well, they haven't actually broken it yet. When does it go to? I mean, when is that match? <laughs> Excuse me. What do you mean? When is the Gunther match? SummerSlam. Which is what day? Well, I don't know. So it's still in effect for a couple of months, basically. Well, basically. I mean, yeah. I don't think he's beaten Gunther anyway, so it doesn't matter. But still, well, exactly. they pretty much told you that stip was BS. August 3rd. August 3rd. Sami Zayn promo. He got murdered again by Braun Breaker. Ilya Dragunov made the save, set up a match for later on. Clearly going back to Braun Breaker versus Sami, which I'll get to in a moment. Miz Truth and Braun versus Carlito, Finn, and J.D. McDonough. Uh, Finn won. Miz actually could have tagged himself in, but didn't. He just screamed at Truth to turn around, even though he, Truth is right there next to him. Truth gets hit with the uh, drop kick, shotgun drop kick, and the coup de gras. I think Miz is turning heel. Oh, God. Can Miz just get an office job? I mean, he's. No, they got that documentary. He's got to turn heel for the documentary. I guess. I mean, he doesn't have to, but. They doesn't have to, but. Then we had Dom playing video games, and of course, the Judgment Day walked in, and. Actually, first Liv is there, and she uh, she wants to work on moves. He doesn't want to. He trips and falls. She starts stretching his hamstring. He says, oh, that does feel good. And, of course, that's the moment Priest and Judgment Day walk in. And so she leaves, and we have some inappropriate banter. And then uh, Dom says, I'm going to go fix this problem right now. So he leaves, and then Finn says, Priest, you had something you wanted to tell us. What is it? And then Priest says, I'm not going to tell you. Dom's going to find out for himself anyway. Right then I knew, oh, man, he's screwed. So in wrestling parlance, they uh, were some stiff comments? Yes. Another VHS tape, Therapy with Bo and Uncle Audi. I don't know what the point of this is. I thought we got through it last week. Bo is Uncle Audi. Can we, can we get the show on the road? He so did end up meeting with Adam Pierce in the next segment, however. So I think we might be getting a Wyatt Six match at some point. What does this or have something. to do with Chad Gable? I don't know, but is Chad's, wanna... he's insistent these videos are all about him. Well, he's the only one who's been, you know, shot in the head and attacked and had the smoke machines turned on him, so I could understand how he could feel like maybe he's being targeted. 
Braun Breaker beat Ilya. Actually, Braun Breaker and Ilya Dragunov, they had a DQ finish when Braun threw a chair at him. And then he destroys him afterwards. Sammy runs chair. down. It was awesome. Sammy runs down. He gets killed. Ilya tries to make the save. He gets killed. So Braun Breaker single-handedly completely destroyed two grown men here. And, you know, I talked about it yesterday with Dave. It's like they had to find a way to rehab him after beating him. When the simple solution would just be, don't beat him. But I guess they figured, whatever they figured, I don't get it. Carry and Cross. Because it worked for Gunther, so why not do this with Braun too for at least a couple of months? Why not? You know, Carry and Cross promo. They're still feuding with the New Day. Ugh. Kane Katan and Lyra versus Damage Control. Damage Control got the win, and then they were attacked by the new trio Sonya, Shayna, and Zoe Stark. Sonya Deville is back. And they want to take over this division. And then the main event was Liv and Dom versus Ray and Zelina. So uh, Ray goes up top near the end. Liv crotches him. Dom hits the frog splash. And for the first time ever, Dominic Mysterio pinned Ray Mysterio. He pinned his father for the first time here on Raw. And he's so excited that him and Liv, they, they have this big hug. Ah, he freaks out all of a sudden. He tries to back away. She jumps into his arms and yanks him to the ground. And she's trying to pull his head in, and he's fighting. But then he gazes deep into her eyes. And he's like, all righty. And he moves in for that big kiss. And all of a sudden, they hit Rhea Ripley's music. And... Man, oh man, the look on Liv's face, the look on Dom's face. Liv goes sprinting out of the arena. Dom's in the ring with his head down. Rhea gets in the ring. They, She's just chewing him out, and he wants a hug, and she just starts brushing past him as they're showing off the air. And I was told, you know, one of the big improvements since Vince has been gone is Lee Fitting. They got rid of Kevin Dunn. Lee Fitting is absolutely in- incredible, but they've uh, they've had some issues at the end of the show. And they almost missed their cue on this one, but they managed to get it done. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.